You know, it has been said that art is the revelation of truth in a public place. And our next guest, Jeff Long, has been revealing his artistic truth for a very long time on galleries around the world. Welcome, Jeff. Thanks, David. You know, I've been looking at your new work, an exhibit called Jeff Long, The Birds of California Beyond Audubon. And it's very different from your previous work, <laughs> including one that hangs on the, uh, the wall of my home. What, what got you to make this switch? Well, for years and years and years, I went on a detour into abstraction, which I really enjoyed. It really served me well, and it, I had lots of shows. Those abstract works were sort of a mix of 20th century design and tribal influences, pattern and color, high key. But I've always loved to draw, and I just haven't drawn in a while. I, yeah. I got away from it. So I decided I would return to my first love of drawing and get back into my other interest, which is nature. Right. And uh, I thought, yeah, why not uh, set myself a project and right. illustrate the birds of the West? Yeah. Now, you, you say that you took a detour to distraction. I mean, I've known you now for 20-some years, and I would never have thought of you first and foremost as uh, some of that graphic. Uh, it was always abstraction. So when did the detour start? Uh, it started uh, around 1990 when I sort of abandoned my landscape-related work mm -hmm. and moved gradually into abstraction. First really strongly constructed things and then gradually very flattened collage-based things. Mm -hmm. and, and your work hangs on the walls of museums all over the world and in private collections and... Yeah, yeah, a number of them, especially yeah, yeah, in, a number of in them. the U.S., yeah. Um, what made you switch from this work that has been very successful for you, I would dare say even lucrative, to works which are about nature? You say you're always into nature, but these works, if, if, if I laid them side to side next to the work that I came to know you uh, for doing, I would have said, wow, that's not a Jeff Long. Right. It's, it, it does confuse some of my dealers. Uh, are they happy about it or are they concerned? Uh, <laughs> both. I get a little bit of both. But um, the thing is... Uh, the, I always had this idea that Audubon didn't give uh, full treatment to the birds of the West because and he never traveled west of the Mississippi yeah, Valley. Yeah, talk a little bit about that. For people who don't know Audubon, who he was and what his legacy is. Yeah, well, uh, starting in the uh, mid-19th century, his project was Birds of America. And he painted incredible paintings, you know, comprehensive view of Birds of America. Some of the Western birds he also did a very good job with. Many of them received short shrift because he never visited the West and because he was relying on specimens which were provided to him dead, stiff, and shipped to the East. Yeah, so which it's hard, it's hard to kind of make a bird lifelike if it's there it, yeah. after a taxidermist has gotten a hold of it. So he had, he didn't, wasn't able to provide the context, the environment, the, the habitat, the, the plants, all of that that goes along with it. So what I've done is try to introduce that and at the same time update it, update the subject with ideas about man's impact on the landscape, human history, um, environmental concerns, and a little bit of allegory as well. Mm -hmm. So there's a kind of a narrative component to these paintings. Yeah, I, when I was looking at them just this morning, it struck me also that there was almost, in the way they're drawn, a a sexual content to some of them. There, there's an eroticism to them. Is, is that conscious or is it just because the animals, the birds, seem so full of emotion? Yeah, that's a really interesting point. I had never thought of it that way. But I mean, the erotic... Maybe it's just my dirty mind. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the erotic is at the root of creativity and mm -hmm. the artistic impulse. I'll go as far as that. But I don't, I don't know, you know, I th maybe there's a bit of anthropomorphism mm -hmm. there. Yes, maybe yes. that's what you're referring to. Yes. And maybe that's because of the narrative element, mm -hmm. the, the storytelling element. Um, but eroticism, I'll have to look further into that. Right. Now, were you a fan or an aficionado of Audubon before this project? Oh, crazy about him. And what I liked about Audubon is that he stood us outside of the mainstream of American art history. Um, a lot of uh, 19th century painting was imbued with the spiritual and sort of the romantic, and a lot of it was 
you know, very strongly influenced by German painting and European painting in general. Audubon was more like a graphic, simple artist. In a way, I sort of relate him to, um, oh, Japanese wood block artists, mm -hmm. you know, a simple graphic. And his project was an amalgam of science and art. Mm -hmm. And that interests me, because I've always had those two interests. Well, and, and these paintings are very much an amalgam of science and art, but also, as you said, environmentalism. I mean, the, the, uh, the commentary in them is very strong. I mean, it's, it, these, are, these are message pieces, don't you think? Yeah, there, some more than others. Some are more straightforward, others have more of an environmental story. Mm -hmm. uh, one image of the, uh, the white, the California, the, I mean the Western, or the, excuse me, the American white pelican is a narrative about the uh, war on the Pomo Indians of Northern California. And there's actually a scene in the background of the burning Pomo village. And in the foreground, one of the white pelicans is retrieving a human skull from mm -hmm. under the waters of Clear Lake mm -hmm. up in Lake County, California. Mm -hmm. And this, this historical event in which the U.S. Army came in to wipe out the village of Pomos occurred in 1846. Relatively recently, you know, in terms of California history is, is such a, uh, uh, you know, such a modern invention, mm -hmm. such a recent thing. So um, that's the narrative there. So little story, and mm -hmm. um, some of the others have references too. Now, uh, you talk about how you have always been into nature, and this is a return, uh, almost a lyricism uh, in, in a way, and the, the paintings are very lyrical. And I know that you and your longtime partner have a house in Lake County. Um, how much of these are autobiographical works? How much of you is in this? Oh, that's interesting, because getting that little place up there in, the, in Lake County has influenced me profoundly, because it's put me back in touch with nature. Mm -hmm. After living in New York and in San Francisco for years and years, mm -hmm. uh, I, it was sort of a return to my boyhood in a way. It was a return to birds and animals and trees and all of that stuff, and it feels really good. Mm -hmm. So some of the paintings actually refer directly to things I've seen at the ranch, mm -hmm. like the flocks of crows that come in every year in August and September and fill the oak trees with their noise, or the California thrasher interacting with the gopher snake. All these things yeah. are local vignettes. So are you now a city boy that escapes to the country, or are you now a country, are you now a mountain man that comes to the city for TV interviews? <laughs> Which is it? Uh, I think I'm still a city guy, but I have a deep interest in the other two. Right. I mean, I'm a city guy because the art career really depended upon being in a city. Right. Now, you have three openings coming up. The, these works, Jeff Long, uh, The Birds of California, Beyond, Audubon, have actually three openings. Tell me a little bit about each of those, and one that I know you're very interested in, which is a benefit for the Earth Island Institute. Yeah, this, um, the three exhibits that are coming up this summer are uh, all at the same time. One is at Toomey Terrell Gallery at 49 Geary, which is my long-term gallery that represents my work. In San Francisco. In San right. Francisco. And uh, that will, a certain number of the works will be there. Another body of work will be over at the Transamerica Center, which has a long history of corporate art shows. And uh, the Transamerica Tower itself, because of Homeland Security, no longer allows exhibitions within that space. But the adjoining annex building, address 505 Sansom, is the location for the show. Mm -hmm. And that space is a really beautiful space, which opens out onto the Redwood yeah, Park. Yeah, there's a wonderful Redwood Park right in downtown San Francisco. Yeah. And then the third is in the East Bay. And the third is at the David Brower Center in Berkeley. And uh, that is a group show. And I'm one of several, I think 20 Bay Area artists. Right who address the environment in one way or another. And the title of that group show is Hello Tomorrow, right. which is about artists coming to terms with environmental issues and the f for right. future and all of that. And David Brower, the David Brower Center, is coincidentally named for David Brower, who founded yeah. Earth Island Institute. Talk about an iconoclast. Yeah. I mean, not someone that didn't ruffle, pardon the pun, I, I walked right into that. I was going to say someone that didn't ruffle feathers. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He, uh, you know, he was the, uh, the head of the Sierra Club, but he was perhaps a little more pushy than the Sierra Club wanted him to be, and he w was ousted from that board, and he went on to found 
a number, well, at least two other environmental organizations, one of which is Earth Island Institute. And Earth Island Institute is sort of a, uh, a fiscal agent, a seed bed for lots of grassroots organizations in the environment internationally, and it helps these organizations get up and running, and then it supports them long term. Some of their relationships with these organizations have been going on for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. One organization, for instance, that they have supported is the Rainforest Action Network. Mm -hmm. And there are many, many others. Right. And uh, they've done a great job. They're really one of my favorite organizations. And so how does this uh, exhibit benefit the Earth Island Institute? Just direct sales, a portion goes to benefit Earth yeah, Island? Uh, yeah, they're going to get... A and all three or just the one in Berkeley? Uh, all three, mm -hmm. all three, and they're going to get a percentage of the proceeds of any possible sale. Uh, and um, I, it, it's a good fit, I think, because the subject of the work is very much nature mm -hmm. and the environment. Mm -hmm. So, Does it ever get difficult when you switch subjects like this? I mean. When you were doing the birds, did you just think, oh, there's got to be kind of a collage in there, or this is going to be a little abstract? I mean, what's the process like for you? I, in my mind's eye, knew clearly that it would be very straightforward. It would be a very separate kind of uh -huh. body of work. Although, one could make a case that there's an abstract element mm -hmm. in the bird compositions, right. just in terms of color and balance and all that. But um, but no, it, it, was, it was clear that these would be strictly drawing-based right. and very different from my other work. In, in our last few moments, talk a little bit about something I've asked every openly gay artist who's come on the show. How does who you were and are as a gay man impact your art? Uh, the gay sensibility has been argued a lot, and I think there might be one, but um, I, I don't have any scientific evidence for it. <laughs> uh, that was I, a nice way. I, I would say... Question, yeah that when I was really young, which was a long time ago, um, before Stonewall, uh, it seemed clear that as a teacher, which was one of the options I thought about for a career, I would be at risk as a gay man. I would, might be discriminated against, I might be fired. And as an artist, As an artist, I was an independent entity. I was answering only to myself. I was, you know, sort of uh, calling the shots in a way and not answering to any kind of possible judgment in that in that term in terms of my sexuality great we've been speaking with jeff long whose new show jeff long the birds of california beyond audubon will be on view shortly next up we'll be looking behind the closet door about the hidden life of lesbians of color we'll be right back